I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. This is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with a salt deficiency, because this week we watched Smith & Jones. Written by Russell T. Davies. Directed by Charles Palmer. And aired on March 31st, 2007. I don't think Charles Palmer has directed for the show before. It's not a name I recognize. No, yes, no. This is his first... Oh, and he directs next week, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's back again. That one that definitely just isn't a rehash of the Charles Dickens story. <laughs> yeah, we're not there yet. You'll see. You'll see. I mean, this was just a rehash of Rose, if, if yeah. we're being honest. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. Uh, it's really just Russell T. doing greatest what hits he of does, Rose. <laughs> the greatest hits of Russell T. Davies. <laughs> Except yeah, now, I wonder yeah. who writes Shakespeare Code. Probably Russell T. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway. Bring Euros Lynn back. What is this? Uh, I mean, there's no indication Boycott that he's season left. season three. <laughs> <laughs> there's no indication that Euros has left the show. We're only one episode into season three, two, watch, if you count <laughs> Runaway watch. Bride. Episodes directed by Euros Lynn. <laughs> You have a very Lynn small cost. sampling size of the show to choose from. <laughs> yeah, not all of them are very good. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? No, no. I uh, unfortunately watched this. No, it's actually not that unfortunate. This was a it was a pretty solid episode. So just a simple, nice story. Was kind of rehashy, especially with Martha's character. Kind of uh, almost the exact same character as Rose, but uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Well, it begins with with Martha. Begins with just the title sequence for once. Yeah, there's nothing pre-title sequence. Also similar to Rose. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, so we see Martha's like walking down the street, and she gets phone calls from all of her family members at once. Yeah, unlike Rose, Martha has a way bigger on-screen family that we see. She has a sister, a brother, a mom. And a dad, and a mom and dad are divorced, it appears. Yeah, and the, the dad has a new girlfriend or whatever, who the it's, rest of the family doesn't really like. Yeah, so it's... But it's her brother's 21st birthday. And the dad's bringing his, his new girlfriend, but the mom doesn't approve, so like Martha and her sister are trying to figure out, like, oh, is there a way we're going to be able to make this work without it blowing up in our faces? <laughs> Spoiler, no! <laughs> But uh, that thankfully you know, isn't really what the episode is about. <laughs> <laughs> so then Martha, while she's on the phone, the doctor walks up to her and says, See? Like this. And he takes off his tie and then he walks away and you're like, you're left wondering, wait, what the hell? <clears throat> no, I knew exactly what was going on. No, no. <laughs> I guessed and I was right. No, no, no. I mean, I remembered from the last time I watched this episode, but I mean, I remember the first time I watched this episode, I was like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's what I did too. But then I just forgot about it because now Martha gets to where she's going, which is her hospital that she works at. Yeah. Um, because she's doing her residency, I guess. Yeah, because she's not a doctor yet, but she says later on that she's going to become one soon if she yeah. just passes this. Which, I mean, based on her performance, <laughs> uh, diagnosing the doctor is mm, weak, weak. <laughs> Yeah, well, first, the uh, head physician or whoever this guy is, uh, Stoker, I think his yeah, name is. Yeah, he's the head of the hospital. He uh, he asks Martha and a group of other <laughs> trainees <laughs> what's wrong with this woman, and she's complaining that she has, uh, I don't even remember, stomach cramps or something. And uh, they all give really complex answers that would take a lot of time and money. And he's like, you can just ask her what she ate last night. It turns out she's had salad every night for the past week, so she has a salt deficiency. Uh, according to this head doctor, doctor, I mean, he could be totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could, but it, it, he seems to imply that he's diagnosed her with this before, because when she says she's eaten salad for the past week, he's like, ah, against my instructions. <laughs> so, uh, but But that begs the question, how would any of the trainees know Stoker's instructions to this woman... I, th you know. I mean, I think the point was that they were just supposed to ask the patient rather than run a bunch of tests. Yeah. Well, then the point for the next one is because then he he takes them over to the doctor and he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, pain. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so the the guy asks Martha to 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 check his pulse, 
and she did to find out what's wrong with him. She's to like, diagnose Whoa, him. two hearts. That's kind of weird. No, she doesn't say that yet. Yeah, but the doctor kind of winks at her when she she finds out that he has two hearts, and then she says something like, "Oh, you know, st- stomach pain." And the guy's like, "That's a symptom, not a diagnosis." And he's like, "You could have just looked on this chart right here and see it says exactly what's wrong." She's like, "Dang it!" He's like, "You got to remember to check the chart, Martha. You you got to check the chart first, Martha. Come on, Martha." Yeah, interesting. Interestingly, this has nothing to do with that. But I was reading about implementing checklists in surgery rooms, so you know maybe charts are good things to have around in in hospitals. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Come on, Martha. It's just a tangent. But anyway, Martha's like, "Yeah, you're uh, really weird. That uh, thing this morning, yeah, it was pretty strange." The doctor's like, "What are you talking about?" And then now you're mm-hmm. even more like, "What the hell?" The doctor's like, "Wasn't me." I mean, I thought the doctor was just messing with her, like he usually messes with people. <laughs> Nope, but, but it, wasn't, know, it, wasn't, no. it wasn't him. He's like, you, you walked up to me and took off your tie. And I'm, he's like, like, what? No, no, I didn't. He's like, no. He's like, oh, you must have a twin brother. <clears throat> kind of like I have, kind of like how I have a cousin who looks exactly like me, who died six months ago. <laughs> no, I'm saying, that's, nope. what they, that's what they write off how this is the same actress <laughs> who plays What's-Her-Face, <laughs> who died in, um, in a... Doomsday. Uh, Doomsday. Well, so apparently Russell T wanted to just bring back that character directly because he liked <laughs> Freema so much, what? but there wasn't enough time to refilm that episode to make it so that she lived. So <laughs> it's turned into a cousin. It's not the first time that an actor's been on Doctor Who before and played a substantial role. I mean, Colin Baker played that guard on Gallifrey like two years before and he played La- the Doctor. Lala Ward played Princess whatever her name was. Astra. <laughs> that one was written off. In a similar way to this, actually, <laughs> where Romana just liked how Astra looked. <laughs> I mean, I don't really mind if they, they do things like that and use the same actor slash actress, but I, they got to get better at, 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 at writing these things You know off what? If they just universe. completely not even brought it up, I probably wouldn't have even re- recognized it. I mean, probably eventually. And I probably would have read something about it, but if it, if it had been like a full year or however long it had been, nine months or whatever since the last episode, and I was watching this in real time, yeah, there's no way I would have even remembered. Because <laughs> Freema was such a minor character, and yeah, the story about Russell T liking her character and wanting to bring her back, just why? Why? <laughs> what is there to like about her character? I mean, other than that she's not like a criminal or mass murderer or <laughs> someone like that. <laughs> oh, what, like Savalon Glitz? <laughs> I don't know, maybe he just liked her acting a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe. Maybe he always planned to bring her back as the companion for this week, and he just happened to cost her. Or he the just casting happened department. to kill her accidentally. <laughs> yeah, the casting department just happened to cost her for Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, mm. and then Russell T was like, eh. <laughs> well, eh. I- <laughs> Did you not get the memo? <laughs> Somehow I don't think that's the case, but, you know, maybe. Maybe. I mean, we can't really know, can we? No, no, we can't. I just don't believe that at all. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you for not believing it. It's like a pretty far-fetched story that I just kind of made up. Anyway, some weird garbage starts happening. It's not really uh, garbage. Her sister, Martha's sister calls her, and she's like, oh, hey, how's it going? And her sister's like, hey, let's get lunch or something so we free out this party. Oh, wait. Why is it raining, like, just on the hospital? Martha's like, yeah, I'm not going out in the rain, so uh, I guess she just stays in, like, 75% of the time since she lives in England. <laughs> Rim shot! No, okay. You know, that, that actually brings up a good point in that every time we see London, it's, like, it's never sunny, raining. sunny, cloudless yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> Has there ever been a time in Doctor Who where it's actually been raining in London when we see London for the entire episode? I mean, now. But it's just like weird just, sci-fi rain. Yes, yeah, and it's just right over the hospital. It's yeah. not actually rain. It's like a teleporter beam. <laughs> Which Martha's sister brings up. She's like, hey, it's, it's, it's raining up, and it's like only over the hospital that you're in. Martha's mm. like, well, that's weird, but uh, hey, I have more important things to worry about. Like, I'm going to fail my doctor exams, probably. And But yeah, then they get yeah. teleported to the moon. Yeah. So pretty typical Tuesday afternoon. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> For the doctor, maybe. I, I, I don't know. Martha's like running around because, you know, people would, would panic if yeah, they're all of a sudden on the moon. Pretty much everyone in the hospital freaks out, which 
I guess makes sense, but the, the extras playing these people just do such a terrible job at acting surprised and, and horrified that the scene is just hilarious. <laughs> well, they all don't react immediately at first. They all, like, take a second to process, and then they all react. <laughs> and even and their reactions are just so humorous as well. You just have to watch it to, to get it. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, mimic them, but yeah. <laughs> Martha and her, her friend, I guess, like go to the room that the doctor's in. Martha's going to open the window and the lady's like, don't, all the air will escape. And Martha's like, it's not like this building was built to be airtight. <laughs> if the air was going to escape, it would have escaped already. So we're already establishing Martha as being uh, pretty smart, thinks on her feet. Smarter than Rose. Smarter than Rose. Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but it's true. Smarter than Rose. She's basically just a smarter Rose, which I guess is good. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> they do bring up Rose in this episode again. Which, yeah. I mean, I guess that's fine in this episode, at least, you know, maybe if you didn't watch the Christmas special or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, something gives me the feeling that they're going to keep doing it throughout this season. <laughs> and that something would be you and several other people online saying that they're going to keep doing it throughout this season. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> So <laughs> the doctor's like, yeah, it's very clever, Martha. Your name's Martha, right? And she's like, yeah. He's like, ah, yeah. Smith and Jones. Yeah. That's us. Yep. Yeah, the, That's the me, doctor John Smith. Back the, the John Smith alias. Which is interesting, because wasn't the John Smith alias invented in, a, in like a hospital type situation where Jamie like read it off the equipment in that room? I think so. I don't remember. Honestly. The doctor was like knocked out, and D- Jamie's like, uh, uh, his name's uh, John Smith. He just <laughs> reads it off of like the, the x ray machine or something. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So the doctor's like, well, is there a balcony we can go out onto? And Martha's like, yeah, it's in the patient lounge. And I was like, there's a patient lounge? <laughs> And the doctor's like, well, we might die. It's where you can contract others' diseases, you know, if you want to extend your stay, if you're really enjoying that hospital experience. You can contract that 20-minute disease <laughs> from New Earth that just, just kills you in 20 minutes. And there's no reasonable way you'd ever get to the hospital in time unless you were beamed there. Anyway, they go, they go out onto the uh, balcony and, again, something that the reboot does... Uh, in probably more than half of its stories is they look out onto a, into a wide vista of space and see something interesting, and this time it's Earth. And well, Martha goes like, it's beautiful. The doctor's like, hmm, I guess we can still breathe out here. It must be a force field uh, so he, somewhere nearby. He finds, like, a stone, apparently, on this balcony. Yeah. <laughs> and throws it at the some, force field. Yeah, so there is a force field, which mm-hmm. I, I, I guess the uh, Jadoon can just get through the force field. Well, it's I guess their it's force their force field. field, but the rock can't get through. <laughs> yeah, the rock. <laughs> Even more proof that the rock should play the doctor. Why, you know, it really imposed that limitation to make the show more interesting where he can't get through force fields. <laughs> you know, that would bring a lot of tension and drama to the show. <laughs> when, did, when was the lost force field we had on this show? This episode. Before this episode. <laughs> I don't know, but they could bring, they could incorporate them more. No, I'm going to say Have the rock no. be unable to get through them. <laughs> That's a pretty bad idea. <laughs> incorporating more force fields is just a bad idea in this show. Just just period, bad idea. Anyway, the Jadoon land and their, uh, their ships walk through the force field, I guess. Yeah, meanwhile, we see this old lady and her two biker buddies. <laughs> Yeah, this is the same old lady with the salt deficiency. Yeah, and she's going to Mr. Stoker's office. And she's like, you're going to be very tasty. And he's like, I don't understand what you're saying at all. She's like, like, I'm going to drink you. (laughs) He's like, listen, I know everyone's uh, in a panic and freaking out because we're on the moon. But uh, this is no time to... uh to be alarmed and she just pulls out a straw sticks it in his neck and drinks his blood out I like how this story <laughs> found a way to just make black motorcycle gear into it like an actual <laughs> costume well, these guys actually looked pretty similar to the Jadoon and before the Jadoon took their helmets off yeah um, so you know I kind of thought like oh maybe she's in league with the Jadoon you know what's going on here uh, but no actually she's not yeah because the Jadoon now uh, take their helmets off. And well, only one of them takes the helmet one off. Of them probably because they only made one like, <laughs> yeah. prosthetic face. I mean, the, the prosthetic face looks really good. So he takes his helmet his helmet off, and uh, it's a rhino. Uh, Space rhino. And uh, the, the mask looks really good for, for this show. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it does. It, it looks like they actually put time and effort and care into making this alien costume. And, and, you know, unlike most aliens in the classic show, more notably, but also just throughout Doctor Who, the, the mouth actually moves with the words. So, you know, it's not just horribly off with what the character is saying. Yeah, but it doesn't move perfectly. It, it reminds perfectly. me a lot of those aliens in Phantom Menace. <laughs> Yeah, but those... Okay, well, we won't get into the weird racial dynamic of Phantom Menace. The Well, the the space rhinos scan a dude who's, like, panicking. He's like, please don't kill us. We're here in peace. We don't want to yeah, hurt this, you. This doctor steps up and he's like, uh, we come in peace or like, we want to interact peaceably with you. And, uh, you know, as soon as this guy speaks up, you know, he's just in way over his head. Because the dude just scan him and they're like, human, mark his hand. Yeah, and they assimilate his language so they can speak in English. Yeah. Although why why they'd want to speak in English, I don't know. <laughs> they have their own language. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe just to indicate what they're doing. They've also got, like, only... space markers to mark people's hands with. I think they're just normal markers. <laughs> they look like space markers. Like, they took a normal... The, the prop department took a normal marker and, and, and gussied it up with some <clears throat> Launched them out into stuff. space and brought them back, and, and now they're space markers. No, no. <laughs> So, you know, the Jaduna... Extremely technologically advanced. Yeah. I mean, they actually are, considering their language assimilation <laughs> device, but, uh, you know, the, the marker is a pretty valuable piece of technology. Yeah, it's something that not a lot of societies in alien cultures have invented, so to see that the Jadun have is really a mark of their technological it's advancement. A mark. Huh. <laughs> huh. And, and their position along the evolutionary scale, showing that it's pretty high up, almost up there with humans. <laughs> Anyway, the Jadun started going through the hospital, verifying that people are humans. Well, so the Doctor and Martha see the first confrontation. They're, they're like, watching from a balcony. And I was like, oh, there's a little shop. I love little shops. And Martha's like, yeah, we have a shop. Why is that important? There's aliens. <laughs> there's aliens, and you're focusing on the shop, and the Doctor's like, you're right. Doctor's Good like, there's, there's been aliens in this hospital ever since I got here. And Martha's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> He's like, okay, all right, you listen to both my hearts, right? So, yeah, he, he, he explains that the Jadun are, are like space mercenaries, cops. I guess. They're cops for hire. Which makes them mercenaries, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know who they're here for, but he knows they're looking for someone who's obviously not human because they're scanning all the humans, uh, obviously. Which is bad for the Doctor because the Doctor's not human. Yeah, so Martha... I guess, understandably, goes, well, they're looking for you then, aren't they, Doctor? And he's like, well, as far as I know, no, but, you know, when they find me, they're going to find out that I'm not human. Martha also refuses to call the Doctor Doctor, but only does that once and immediately starts calling him Doctor, you know, in a couple minutes. So, you know, I, I don't really know what, what that was. It was supposed it, to be something about how he's supposed to earn the title of Doctor. But then she, Russell T just throws it away, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the only thing he really does to earn it is kill the slab, but so uh, it's, it's kind of lame. Yeah. Well, and he turns off the MRI machine, which yeah. is going to kill half of Earth. Which, yeah, I guess if you're a doctor, you should know how to turn off an MRI thing. So I guess that earns <laughs> yeah. him the title of doctor. <laughs> so the doctor's, the doctor's running around in, in one of the slabs. The slabs are, um, what's her face is the old woman whose name I forgot. Uh, the plasma vor. Yeah, the plasma vor. They're her assistants, the motorcycle guys. Yeah. So what happens is Martha like accidentally busts into the office and sees the plasma vor sucking up the the final Stoker. gulps of Stoker. <laughs> Jesus. You do. You actually. I didn't think they were going to show it, but you see Stoker's drained body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is just great. And she tells the slabs to to kill Martha because she's seen too much. And so the doctor grabs Martha's hands, like run, and and they're running. Definitely not taken straight out of Rose, haha. <laughs> you thought we would forget two years later, Russell T. You thought we would forget. You well, thought wrong. It hasn't been two years for us, so you thought wrong. <laughs> so they like run up the stairs, and I was like, wait a minute, that's like a key flaw in the Jadoon's plan. Because later on, they run down to a floor the Jadoon never really checks to hide out, and I'm like, that's a critical flaw in the Jadoon's plan. What, what is? The fact that they're going like floor by floor, floor and not 
rechecking floors or like not sealing off the stairwell so all the people stay on their floors but going floor by floor because that way they they think that they'll be able to check everyone but if they don't seal off the stairwell people can just go hide on floors that the Jadud have already checked I guess <clears throat> which is exactly what the doctor and Martha do <laughs> like in 10 minutes <laughs> so well, yeah well like they run upstairs and they the doctor asks Martha to take him to like an x-ray machine and then they go, and the doctor uses his sonic screwdriver to to overload the X-ray machine, and he blasts the slab and kills him. And in the process, Ooh. fries his sonic screwdriver. So like, yes, More, <laughs> yeah. I, that was my reaction when this happened because in, in the last episode, Russell T pretty much went crazy with the sonic screwdrivers. It was like, okay, finally they're they're taking it out of commission. You know, maybe that was just <laughs> a last hurrah for the sonic screwdriver. And uh, like the classic, <laughs> like the classic show, they realize that uh, you know you just can't use it too much, but they bring it back. At the end of this episode. Anyway, Martha is also now on on the uh, kill count. She's killed in her first appearance. Yeah. <laughs> nice. They do say the slabs are just lifeless hunks of clay or whatever. Yeah, but, but the doctor we're, also... We're still, kill, we're still counting them, I guess. Well, yeah, because the doctor explicitly says, oh, he's dead. I killed him dead with that radiation. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty <laughs> indisputable right there. <laughs> <laughs> they killed him. Martha says, isn't the radiation going to affect you, Doctor? The doctor's like, I, I guess, but I'll just uh, bring... I'll just, Clever uh, foreshadowing. What is this foreshadowing for? Well, you'll find out when it happens. Oh, all right. I mean, I, I'm guessing the radiation is still in his body or something, because he's like, oh, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, get it out. And he just shakes his leg, and he's like, it's in my shoe now, and he throws out his shoe. Martha's and, like, you're mad, and he's like, you're right, can't go around with one shoe, so he throws the other shoe away as well. Also, kind of weird that radiation just doesn't affect him when radiation kills the third doctor, but anyway. <laughs> the third doctor spent, like, two weeks deliriously piloting the TARDIS until <laughs> he found Sarah Jane again. You know, if there's one thing that, uh, that, uh, people who make Doctor Who aren't concerned with, it's continuity, so... <laughs> the Doctor and Martha, they kind of just walk around for two or three minutes and then they accidentally walk right into a Jadoon platoon the doctor says the Jadoon moon. platoon on the moon at some point which I, I and I know I've told the story on the podcast before but Russell T specifically put that line in there because it was hard for for David Tennant to do in his his fake accent <laughs> yeah third uh, third doctor that's third weird doctor. <laughs> tenth doctor's voice sounds slightly different and I guess this is just David Tennant not having done the voice for a while mm-hmm. yeah probably you know, you know it's, it's difficult to put out an accent for 12 episodes of a season, which is basically like three months of filming, really, or even longer. Yeah. Three I mean, nothing that ruins the episode, nothing too egregious, just something I noticed. And they scan him and they're like, non-human. And she's like, oh my God, you really are not human. He's like, oh God, run. The June give them like a five second head start for some reason. We forgot to mention the one guy who goes full, like... Rambo on the Jadoon oh, yeah. <laughs> picks up a vase <laughs> and smashes it on the Jadoon and looks then they're like, like <laughs> it looks like they just made that vase for this story because it's just a plain white unglazed looks unglazed vase and there's really no logical reason why a vase would be in the middle of a hospital <laughs> corridor on like the third floor I, oh okay I mean if it's decorative if there's a plant in it then sure uh, if there's a decorative like vegetable a... in it, so to speak. But, but no, it didn't no, look it just... like there was. <laughs> no, there wasn't. <laughs> the face was just sitting there empty. It, when, it, when it shattered, too, it wasn't even like there was water inside and someone was just replacing the flowers when they got teleported. It was no, just an no. empty vase. It's just an empty vase. He, he smashes it over the Jadoon's head and he's like, oh, God, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> his last, the last look on his face before the Jadoon zap him. Yeah, the Jadoon are like, crime, assaulting a police officer, sentence, guilty, or verdict, guilty. <laughs> sentence execution and they just kill him <laughs> and uh justice is swift and uncompromising the one guy who spoke up earlier was like you didn't have to do that the june was like neither did we need him alive <laughs> no 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 sure. <laughs> no right <laughs> russell t doing the greatest hits of russell t <laughs> russell t's final episode really is russell t doing greatest hits of russell t and we'll get there oh god <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> Anyway, the, the Jadoon are pursuing the Doctor and Martha. Uh, yeah, unsurprisingly. And that goes on for, I think, a couple minutes. The rest yeah. of the episode feels a little drawn out. I did really like how, just how simple of a story this episode was. But, you know, maybe maybe it was a bit too simple. I don't know. Maybe. 
I just liked how it was, like, it introduced Martha and sort of just a, a nice, simple backdrop for a, a mm-hmm. story. You know, nothing too out there, just a criminal fleeing from some rhino cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the doctor confronts um, the plasmavore now. He notices that the plasmavore is hiding out in this room. The MRI room. Yeah. We also forgot to mention that they're running out of oxygen in the hospital. Yeah, which is something that they mentioned earlier when they found out that the there was a force field around the hospital. That the doctor and Martha's like, well, that means all the oxygen we have right now is all the oxygen we have, so. Uh, yeah, so the doctor kisses Martha's like, I'm sorry, the, the, but this doesn't mean anything, oh, yeah. okay? This doesn't mean anything. Definitely right? not just Rose 2.0 here. This doesn't <laughs> mean anything, Martha. Absolutely nothing. It means nothing, Martha. Don't get this weird idea that I'm actually in love with you, but you'll never be able to love me or something. Or you're in love with me and I'm not never be able to love you. This, this means nothing, Martha. <laughs> Let me just say it again and drive the point home even more. <laughs> so he kisses Martha and then runs off. Martha's like, wait, what? And the Jadoons scan her and they're like, human with traces of non-human <laughs> contact. And they like slam her against the wall. Like, explain! Explain! Okay, so... <laughs> I wonder, I wonder why the other results didn't turn out uh, as human with traces of non-human present. Because I mean, just in everyday life, you, people interact with non-humans, <laughs> as in like animals, plants, bacteria. Yet all the other results were coming out as just human. Well, so. maybe they filter for that. <laughs> we forgot to mention the reason why the plasma boy had to suck up Stoker was because she needed to. Just, she was able to mimic his blood so that when they scanned her, they thought she was human. Yeah. Although, really, uh, they could have ju- she could have just drawn an X on her hand and they would have been like, oh, we really scanned you. <laughs> really yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> method of, like... <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe the plasmavore here is related to the hemovores from... Oh, yeah. From, uh, I forgot. State of the, Decay? State of Decay, yeah. <laughs> no, no, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Also, Stoker's name is an obvious reference to Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. <clears throat> Actually Irish, not uh, Eastern European, as most people think. Hmm. That is interesting, yeah. actually. Yeah. So the doctor is, like, playing dumb with the plasma yeah. board. Yeah, he, he walks in the room, and he's like, did you see those rhinos? <laughs> and uh, we're on the moon, <laughs> and those rhinos... He's like, yeah, this is great. And uh, the, the plasmavore, I, I guess thinking the doctor isn't a threat, just reveals her entire plan. <laughs> yeah, she's going to use the MRI machine to like kill everything in a couple hundred thousand kilometer radius. And the doctor's like, wait, doesn't that include Earth? And she's like, only the side that faces the moon. <laughs> That's my uh, gift to humanity. Or she said something, like, said something similar to that. my gift leaving half of humanity alive. <clears throat> The doctor's like, ah, right. And she's like, yeah, I just really want the Jadoon ships so I can just leave and uh, never be found. Yeah, I guess her reasoning for killing off the killing off half of the Earth is so that she wouldn't get shot down when she tries to escape with the Jadoon ships. Um, yeah, I mean, considering Torchwood shot down <laughs> that alien spaceship that one time, probably reasonable. <laughs> Enough, I mean, Torchwood doesn't exist anymore. I, I guess she doesn't think, know that. Uh, I don't think I mean, Jack Harkness has reformed Torchwood yet. <clears throat> Yeah, well, she I'm doesn't get sure very far. Timeline. She doesn't get very far with her plan. Yeah, because the Jadoon bust in, and they're like, "Oh, we already scanned you." And Martha's, uh, and they scan it out. She's like, "Oh, deceased. Oh, he's just, <laughs> he's just dead." <laughs> yeah, because because the plasma vor actually uses the straw again to to suck out the doctor's blood. Yeah, because the doctor is like, "Oh yeah, the uh, scanning stage two now. They're rescanning everyone." She's like, "Oh, I gotta absorb more human. Gotta gotta be more human." <laughs> I think you're you're. Human disguise, internal human blood disguise thing was like wearing off or something, and I didn't think they were going to show this either. But they actually do show her sticking the straw into the doctor's neck. Yeah, and then the Jadoon bust in, and the doctor supposedly deceased. He just regenerates into Matt Smith right there. No, <laughs> <laughs> all the rest, all the rest of his episodes occur before this. One. Anyway, they I, the, I Martha forget- convinced that convinces them. Well, she doesn't convince them, actually. She just grabs a scanner and scans the plasma. And she's like, see, I'm human. Because she thinks that the doctor is human. And then the scanner's like, non-human. <laughs> and she's like, wait, what? And then the Jadoon are like, confirm. <laughs> and they all scan her. And they're like, non-human. And they give her the the, the sentence. sentence and the verdict and, and blast her. 
Apparently she's wanted for, like, killing a child princess on some planet. Yeah. And the plasma was like, she deserved it, that bratty little snot. And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> so that's the end of that. But the MRI machine is still going, and they're running out of oxygen, and Martha's like, please save us. And the Jadoon are like, we're done here. And they just leave. <laughs> yeah, the Jadoon just leave. And they're like, uh, we weren't tasked with protecting anyone. We were just tasked with getting this criminal. Which is evident by the fact that we killed someone <laughs> about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, so Martha performs CPR on the doctor, which she has no idea of knowing if it'll work, but really desperate times call for desperate measures, to be honest. I mean, it, the doctor seems pretty physiologically similar to humans, except for the two hearts thing, so... Yeah. Well, it works. Martha, like, t- takes her last gasp of oxygen and, and uses it to wake up the doctor and Thankfully, the Doctor doesn't really need oxygen all that much, as we saw that one time the fourth Doctor just walked through that open airlock. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> ah, I don't really remember, but the fourth Doctor Arc definitely... Ark in space, pro- possibly? Probably. Possibly. There was also that time in, I think, the Mutants, where, the, where there was just no air, and the Doctor's like, yeah, I, don't, I can survive without air for huh. like ten minutes. <laughs> all right. I don't remember that. You know, the Mutants yeah, this is like been, my favorite third Doctor story. Been established before that the doctor can like survive in no oxygen yeah yeah you know even if it wasn't established before i wouldn't uh i wouldn't care that much if they just threw it in here (laughs) i think it was the mutants anyway i might be misnaming the story yeah the mutants was the one where they they were the the bugs and the space jesus guy and and uh yeah i'm pretty sure it was the mutants so then the doctor turns off the MRI machine. He just unplugs the cable and that just turns it off. Really wonder yeah. how they have electricity on the moon because I don't think, you know, I really don't think the hospital's connected to the power grid anymore when it's on the moon. <laughs> but that's just a theory. Yeah, it just solves this entire thing by just unplugging a daisy chain. He tries to pull out a really sonic looks- screwdriver and remembers that it's destroyed and roasted. And he's like, oh. I was like, yeah, not going to be able to rely on that anymore. No, but it's then, then just five unplugs, minutes later, the thing it. that happens, happens. Well, so they, they get teleported back to Earth. The Jadoon teleported back to Earth, and the Doc's like, oh, thank God they teleported us back. And Kind of a cop-out, but, you know, whatever. But it makes sense, really. And they teleport them back in completely the wrong place, crushing an entire city block? No, no. <laughs> no, they put them back in the same place, and, and the, hosp- the the ambulances bust in, and, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, commotion. Commotion. And in the commotion, the doctor leaves. And Martha sees him leave, and she's like, huh, okay, guess I'll never see him again. And then she kind of goes about the rest of her day. She puts on her makeup and her outfit, and she goes... And then we cut to, like, the aftermath, I guess, of the party. <laughs> and the the dad's new girlfriend, wife person is, like, storming out. And there's an argument going on between the mom and the girlfriend. And then the sister's like, oh, Alicia started... I think her name was Alicia, but I'm just going to call her Alicia... He's like, oh, Alicia started it. The dad's like, no, you stay here. And Alicia's like leaving. He's like, no, come back here. I'm putting my foot down. And she just leaves. And he goes running after her. And the mom's like, yeah, you go running. And she leaves. And then the sister goes running after the mom. And then and, the and brother goes off to the mom. And Martha's just left alone. Martha's just like, oh, God. And the doctor shows up. And she's like, can you just take me with you, doctor? I'm really sick of this family. <laughs> no, she doesn't do no. that. She sees the doctor like standing in an alleyway nearby. And she's like, huh weird so she like <laughs> follows him into the alleyway she sees the TARDIS for the first time yeah and this is actually the first time the TARDIS appears in the story come to think of it second time because when we see the doctor leave he gets in oh the yeah TARDIS. all right and well also, I mean it was I, two seconds ago we also see a very very brief clip of it when the hospital has teleported and the, Martha's sister's like oh no it pans over from Martha's sister to show the TARDIS sitting nearby no, okay, I don't remember that, but whatever. I had, a, I had a note, actually, that I wanted to mention. <laughs> when the hospital disappears, Martha's sister, like, runs up in panic, and there's, like, two policemen there. Like, I guess what the effect they were going for was the policemen were, like, trying to keep the crowd back from the disappeared hospital. But there's only, like, six people standing right there. And I'm like, there's only six people on the city block who care that this entire hospital just disappeared. <laughs> there's just, the six, only six people noticed no, no, no. In London, I don't believe it. <laughs> Plus, how is there a police uh, barricade so quickly? Yeah, that right? too. It's not something I noticed when watching the episode, but whatever. Anyway, Martha sees the TARDIS and she's like, 
the doctor asks if he wants to come travel through space with him. Is and she's like, you know what? Nah. And he's like, did I mention that it's also a time machine? Also taken straight yeah. out of Rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Directly and, lifted. And she's like, nah, I, don't, I really don't believe you. And he's like, well, I guess I'll go prove it. So he goes back in time, takes, crosses Martha's own timeline, just what he said he shouldn't do in the previous episode and multiple times before, takes off his tie, comes back. Well, I think the thing is, because the doctor already knows that he goes back and takes off his tie he has to do it yeah he has point. to do it plus he's plus i mean i was just making a jab he doesn't take martha with him so it's not really crossing his own her own timeline yeah i just needed to get that jab in there so yeah it also doesn't really prove that he travels in time really no it doesn't he could have just gotten into his box taken off his tie and stepped out of the <laughs> box and... <laughs> maybe that's what he did and like years later he's like oh shoot gotta take off my tie <laughs> go back in time <laughs> he's like constantly putting it off he keeps procrastinating <laughs> He's like about to die, and he's like, "Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! <laughs> Gotta make sure the timeline doesn't fall apart and go back in time and take my tie off." <laughs> Martha's like, "Well, all right then. Better than hanging out with my family." It's true though. In the background of this shot on the wall, there's a poster that says "Vote Saxon." Yeah, there, so. there was a news announcement a few minutes before this where they talk about Mr. Saxon. It's like Mr. Saxon's prediction was correct or something. I forget what the yeah, actual. Yeah, we're no longer was. alone in the universe or something like that. Yeah, Mr. Saxon is running for I mean, prime minister. Yeah, That's why his vote Saxon in the background. Yeah. The enigmatic Mr. Saxon. Martha is like, oh, it's pretty small. would be pretty intimate. And the doctor's like, yeah, take a look. And she looks inside. She's like, what? 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 No, you gotta, actually, you got to do it like the doctor. What? 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 Anyway. And yeah, that's that. Martha's like, it's bigger on the inside. And the doctor's like, is it? I never noticed. So, like, wow. <laughs> okay. What if he's not lying? <laughs> he just never noticed. So then, I don't know, the doctor... It says this really long self-justification that Martha's not replacing Rose. He's like, I had a friend. Which, her name's Rose. You're not replacing her. She's with her family. She's happy. You're not replacing her, okay? One trip. You only get one trip for, to say thank you for helping me. That's it. One trip, okay? You're not replacing her. Just one trip. Which is obviously not true. And you know, if this episode is any indication, Martha really is just a replacement for Rose, both within the story and just as a character. Yeah, well, then she's like... It's okay, I'm not into you. I only date humans anyway. But then when the doctor's looking away, she makes this really sad and defeated face. And you're like, oh boy, mm, yeah, here we go. I mean, I didn't notice that. I, di I did go, oh boy, here we go again. But I didn't notice the sad and defeated look. <laughs> this, is, this is the optimal moment to quote the brigadier. <laughs> well, here we go again. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Not really looking forward to the obvious romantic BS that you're going to throw in. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm just not even going to comment. I just don't think romance has a, as a, a, a place among the, between the doctor and companions, you know, maybe it's just a one-off thing every once in a while for this story specific characters, but just feels super out of place and just not something that feels like a good addition to the show to me at least. I don't know, but I think it like makes <clears> sense. <throat> I mean, when you live with someone and travel with them for however long. You like for the doc the doctor traveled with Rose, for example. It's natural nah. that guys are gonna. Nah, I don't agree with that. Close friends. I don't agree with Biology. that. Biology. I mean, I don't unless agree you buy that, that theory that the doctor's really asexual or something. <clears throat> well, yeah. bisexual at least, because I don't <laughs> yeah. think we ever mentioned it. Surprisingly, but he kisses Jack at one point, and I forget what story that's in. Yeah, I don't think we did mention it. It's I don't know. I don't know why we didn't mention it. Anyway, the doctor uh, turns on the TARDIS and everything starts shaking. You're like, this is not how the TARDIS is supposed to fly. Usually you fly a lot smoother than this. The doctor's like, welcome aboard, Mrs. Jones. This is it. This is your life now. No, <laughs> no going back. <laughs> Forgot to tell you that I never bring my companions back. No, no. I mean, you it is sort of a 50-50 bet, you know, whether you're going to make it back or not. <laughs> I mean, the ones who don't make it back to their own time tend to usually, like, they, leave in a place that they actually enjoy or want yeah, to they, be. Yeah, they usually do. Usually, you know, every yeah, once in a while sucks you get... for Adric. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Adric wanted to die. I don't think Adric really had a place to go back to, though. I mean, it, he probably could have had a better fate than death, but... 
<clears throat> you know, whatever. Alzarius or whatever was already, like, destroyed by the mist creatures. <laughs> whatever happened, I completely forgot, but, you know, whatever. That's this episode. You know, overall, I just, I liked this episode. I liked sort of the, it's just a simple story, you know, nothing really too difficult to understand. Just a criminal on the run and uh, mm -hmm. introduces Martha pretty well. She is just another Rose, but I felt introduces her pretty well. Yeah, she's more intelligent, which I think is good in a companion. I think it's good to have a companion who's, like, uh, can match the doctor beat for beat, I think. I think that's why Romana worked really well back when we had Romana, because she was, both Romanas were as smart as the doctor, and in some cases, smarter than the doctor, which made it a lot a lot more interesting to see the doctor in situations where he was he wasn't the smartest person in the room and uh, i think that was included back in the in that era to uh sort of curb tom baker but anyway <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know you also you don't want that to be the only facet of their character as is indicated by liz shaw <laughs> <laughs> well i really think but that I, like barry letts didn't know what he wanted to do with liz shaw well, he, he really just brought her on as a, as a companion and then it was like Man, you know, I really didn't think this through, did I? Well, Martha already has more of a personality than Liz, so <laughs> that's good. Classic Liz, I, I, I guess. Yeah, pretty solid start to, to season three. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed this more than most of the uh, episodes in season two. Hopefully we're going to keep up the quality. Hopefully. Next week they go back in time uh, and, and stay in England. <laughs> And, you know, normally I would uh, sort of make a joke or, or sort of bash, like, wow, there's, you know, in, in the UK again. But I guess it makes sense here since the Doctor, um, since Martha's, like, doesn't believe that they travel, they can travel through time. So the Doctor, I guess, wants to demonstrate how, how the TARDIS travels through time. Yeah. So I guess here it makes sense. Yeah. We'll see you next week with the... Uh, the Shakespeare Code. <laughs> where Shakespeare shows up. Love, Love's Labors 1 is mentioned. Which okay, is, I don't even know what that is, and I probably should. Well, it's like, so Shakespeare English, wrote but... a play called Love's Labor's Lost, right? Uh-huh. Uh, there was, like, a rumor that he was writing a sequel oh, called yeah, all Love, right. Love's Labor, Love Labor's One. Love's Labor Love's One? Labor, Love's, Love's Labor's One. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, email us at the doctor at vegetable com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry events, love letters, your thoughts on Martha Jones, a new Doctor Who companion for us. New for us. <laughs> you can find us on YouTube at decorativevegetable.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and Google Play at Trust Your Doctor. Please leave a rating if you like the show. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next time we're watching The Shakespeare Code. But until then, the end.